guys, this is lecture number two of, I don't know how many lectures we will have. Okay, um, I hope lecture number one went smoothly for you all. It was a little longer than I expected, but there was quite a bit of housekeeping that we had to do, so this one will definitely be shorter. Um, just as a reminder that your discussion on horror and terror will be due by... Wednesday, April the 1st at 11.59 p.m. I will send out a reminder on your reminder app. Otherwise, please adhere to the calendar that is now online. For today, you were supposed to have read um, Anzia Yeriziska's America and I and Michael Gold's uh, Landlord short stories. Okay, the discussion for these will be due uh, on Saturday, April 4th at 11.59. Do remember that your horror terror reader response, the special assignment, is going to be due back by um, April the 5th. All right, so um, before we get started, this is my co-star. You all have um, heard him speak. His name is David. Right, what's your name? My name is David Rodriguez Canada. Okay, David, and how old are you? I'm eight years old. You're eight? Okay, and what do you want to tell them? I want to tell them that I got this new book. It's the ninth. It's Captain Underpants. Okay. Should they read Captain Underpants? If you have all the books, then you have to read them. But if you, it's all the way to one through nine. Also, if you go over here or the back, you might see more books. Of course, the ninth has um, this but all the books have this, and and the, and I have I have these two. If you have all of these, read them because so you could get smarter at reading and writing. Why do you like Captain Underpants? I like Captain Underpants because I I have seen it in in Netflix and books. Okay. Who's your favorite character? My favorite character is is Captain Underpants because if someone snacks his fingers, he say tra la la and he and he he turns into Captain Underpants. He, he has his coat and his underwear. Does he save the day? He always gets crazy, but he saves the day all the time. Also, if you put water in Captain Underpants, then he will turn back to the crook. So, Captain Underpants back um was the principal, but but cap but but some of those doesn't have Captain Underpants on it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, David. Appreciate that. Um, they're actually not too bad books. They're actually pretty good. I actually enjoy them. We read them all the time. So before we get started, I have my own book to recommend. He wants you all to read Captain Underpants. Um, okay. So I'm going to recommend to you all um, The Mummy by Anne Rice. I know that Anne Rice is much more popular for her vampire novels, and yes, they're very good, okay? Her vampire novels are great, and I love them very much, um, but The Mummy is my most favorite one of her books. She writes The Mummy in a way that's really not written through Hollywood. The Mummy is, um, he is, um, the way he's discovered is, is interesting. He goes from being like this anti-hero to being a very heroic figure. The second one, uh, the sequel, is out. I haven't read it. I have it on my Kindle because I don't have any time to read right now, but I'll definitely read it. I have three copies of this book, but this one I really love because I know you can't see the little sticker, but I got it autographed by Anne Rice because she actually, um, she dedicated it to me and she autographed it. I got this for my birthday a few years ago and I almost cried. So, yeah. So, anyway, read the book. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it's a big change from her usual vampire um, spiel, so I think you all would really like it. Alright, so that's enough about that, right? Should we get started? Okay. Well, we're we're going to start anyway. Yeah. Let's okay. go. So, okay, um, there are two stories that you all were to have read today, and we're definitely going to start with um, Anzia's story, which is found on page 23... 16. Okay, so um, my little co stars kind of doesn't know quite what to do. So we're going to look at 2316, okay, and this short story is called America and I. The reason I chose this one and then uh, Michael Gould's um, short story that we're going to be reading right now, okay, um, is because I wanted you all to get a different view of the American dream 
not just the American dream, say from the African American perspective or the Latino perspective, I wanted to get the American dream from the Eastern European perspective. We did get a little bit of this in the jungle, okay, and we saw how disastrous the American dream was uh, for uh, the protagonist and his family. In this rate, we get a little bit more of a more hopeful um, look. I think that we see that they are still struggling quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get started then. We're going to read um, American I first on 2316. Okay, this, um, this author will tell you that she comes from Russia. The reason why Russia is so important, and I'm, not, I'm sure that some of you all know this right now, is um, Russia had, has had a really hard time, okay, not just um, back, in, back in the modern period, which is um, 1910 to 1945, but even before. Um, if you were rich, you were great. Okay, you, had, you had the money, you had the... Anyway, if you were rich, um, you had it all. You were a landowner, you had a lot of money, you had um, a lot of power, a lot of influence, okay? Um, especially this being, let's say this, um, we talked about pre-revolutionary Russia. Post-revolutionary Russia, no matter what Lenin wanted to do, it was pretty much the same way. So you had a lot of immigrants wanting to leave Russia um, to escape, you know, at first the Tsar, then Lenin, then Stalin. Okay, and Anzia would be one of these. Okay, she probably spent most of her life in Russia under landowners, never being able to get out, to have her own house, to own her own land, to be her own boss. So she really comes to America, protagonist wants, comes to America, and really wants this for herself. And if we look at 2316, she has really high hopes for America. Okay, it begins easy. as one. It begins very simply. As one of the dumb, voiceless ones I speak, one of the million of millions of immigrants beating, beating out their heart at your gates for a breath of understanding. Ah, America, from the other end of the earth from where I came, America was a land of living hope, of woven of dreams, of flame with longing and desire. There are two aspects that I want you to pay attention in this very emotive um, beginning to the story. The first thing is she says, as one of the dumb, voiceless ones I speak. Okay. And we talk about right now the United States, um, this political climate that we're on, thinking that um, English should come first, right? We've, we've had this discussion about the importance of language, especially to the United States. And I've told you all, as you know, that the United States um, doesn't have an official language. Okay, yes, English is the predominant language, but it really it doesn't have an official language. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. But she calls herself dumb and voiceless. Now, I want you to pay attention to that because she is talking about herself, and she doesn't speak the language, she doesn't speak English, and coming from somebody who speaks Russian with the Cyrillic alphabet, going to English is incredibly difficult, okay? I did the opposite. I went from English to Russian, having to learn the alphabet, having to write like a five-year-old, because the alph alph alphabet is very difficult to write. Um, okay, I see her struggle, and I feel her struggle, and if those of you all who have ever been with someone or been in the company of a group who don't speak English and they're speaking um, another language, you don't understand, you feel very uncomfortable. This is how she felt as well. So that's why she's calling herself dumb and voiceless. Okay. And the second part that I want you to understand is the ideal of America. Okay. She says that the Amer that America is a land of living hope, woven of dreams, and a flame with longing and desire. This is the ideal of America. In the jungle, we read about the ideal of America, right? In um. Emma Lazarus, we read about the ideal America, and this is her ideal America, okay? If you go to the next page, um, choked for ages in the airless oppression of Russia, landowners. The promised land rose up, wings to my stifled spirit, sunlight burning through my darkness, freedom singing to me in my prison, deathless songs tuning prison bars into strings of a beautiful violin. I arrived in America, my young, strong body, my heart, and my soul pregnant with the unlived lives of generations clamoring for expression. Okay, so that's a big handful. That's America. Okay, she was, she's been oppressed, but you know, after being oppressed, she is just going to be, um, she be a winner. She's a hard worker, and she has all of this longing for freedom. Okay, this is, of course, again, very reminiscent of the jungle. 
Remember, they were going to have more money. They were going to have um, a safe place to live. No one was going to be able to take them off to war. Um, they were not going to be abused. And unfortunately, we see in the jungle that that's not the case. And this is definitely not the case here at all either. Okay, let's look at the um, toward the middle of 2317. This is, this is her. Okay, and I want you to remember that we've talked about these very painful negative stereotypes of immigrants. Okay, this isn't just the local, the um, current political uh, climate that I've told you about, but this is before. Okay, we've told you that several minority groups have been placed in the scapegoat, right? In the scapegoat role. Uh, the Polacks, the Lithuanians, the Germans, um, at one point the Jews do as are as well, and this one is the Russians. Okay, one of the main stereotypes that we know of immigrants is that they're lazy. Okay, they're very lazy. But here we see the 2317 that she's not afraid of hard work. The protagonist here understands that she needs to work. In the golden land of flowing opportunity, I was to find my work that, had den that was denied to me in the sterile village of my forefathers. Here I was to be free from the dread drudgery, drudgery for bread that held me down in Russia. For the first time in America, I'd cease to be a slave of the belly. I'd be a creator, a giver, a human being. My work would be the living job of fullest self-expression. Okay. But from my high visions, my golden hopes, I had to put my feet down on earth. I had to have food and shelter. I had to have the money to pay for it. Okay. So she, while she does have this idea of the idealized America, she does understand that she is going to have to work hard, okay? She's going to need to have money and shelter because she, that's not going to be given to her, right? And going on for that, the next, the next um, paragraph, I was in America among the Americans, but not of them. No speech, no common language, no way to win a smile of understanding from them. Only my young, strong body and my untried faith. Only my eager, empty hands and my full heart shining from my eyes. God from the world, here I was with so much richness in me, but my mind was not wanted without the language, and my body unskilled, untrained, not even wanted in a factory. Only one of two chances was left open to me, the kitchen or minding babies. Okay. And again, there's that, that issue that she is an immigrant and countless of immigrants before her, countless of immigrants that are coming now have that issue with the language. If you don't speak the language, you're not going to have an easy time at all. And I know that um, that some people may say, well, she should have studied the language before, or that's just not a very good idea. But the desperation that she must have felt okay, to have to leave Russia, everything that she's known in her life, come to a country where not only is the language different, but the alphabet is completely different, okay? Um, right now, after a break, I'll write something in, in Cyrillic so you all know what I'm talking about. Um, that takes a lot of courage, okay? And that's something that we, um, we really need to acknowledge. You may or may not agree with what she's doing, but that takes a lot of courage. Okay, people do not leave their countries because it's perfect. Okay? They leave their countries because they have to, I believe. All right, so she needs a job, and she finds herself a little job. This here, okay? Thank you. She finds herself her little job. Okay, she finds herself a job. She knows that she can only do two things, is the kitchen and minding babies. So this is the job that she finds. My first job was at a servant at an Americanized family. Once long ago, they came from the same village from where I came. But they were so well-dressed, so well-fed, so successful in America that they were ashamed to remember their mother tongue. Uh, that's a particularly painful paragraph, I think, to see. Um, I don't know if I've told your class this, but a sad portion of oppression, a sad part of oppression, excuse me, is the people who are oppressed eventually become the oppressors. Okay, and I'm going to come back to that right now. Because the people that she's working with, this Americanized family, should be kind to her, should realize that they went through that, maybe we should be kinder to this person. And as we say, they really aren't. Because she says, she asks them, what were to be my wages, I venture timidly, as I looked to the well-fed, well-dressed American man and woman. They looked at me with a sudden coldness. What had I said to draw away from me from their warmth? Was it so low for me to talk about to talk of wages? I shrank back into myself with a low, like a low bargainer. 
Maybe they're so high up in well-being that they can't any more understand my low thoughts for money. From this rich height, the man preached down to me that I must meet, not be so grabbing for wages. Only just landed from the ship and already thinking about money when I should be thankful to associate with Americans. Let's stop there for right now. Okay, so two things. Number one, as I said, the oppressed, so they become the oppressors. Okay, they don't want to remember their background. They don't want to remember how they came to America just as she did, very poor, without knowing much of the language. Okay, they don't want to talk about that. But the second part that I want you all to see is how the man preaches to him from his rich height. Okay, so if I were, okay, if I have my kid here, okay, he's almost as tall as I am. Yes, I understand this. Okay, but if somebody talks to you, speaks to you like this, okay, they're talking down to you and that's what she's, that's what's happening to her, right? They're speaking down to her and how rude is that? How abusive that is? Okay, um. And he tells her, he's like, don't worry about money. You should be grateful to be here with us Americans. You should be very grateful, but she still needs money. Okay? All right. The woman, out of her smooth, smiling fatness, assured me that this was my chance for a summer vacation in the country with her two lovely children. My great chance to learn to be a civilized being, to become an American by living with them. And we have, again, that thought of civilization. You all um, were telling me and, and were writing in your, um, in your midterms how painful it was to read White Man's Burden by Kipling. Because you were thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to be civilized. I, I'm the way I am, right? And a lot of the minorities who read White Man's Burden said the same thing. Hey, we're fine. We don't need to be civilized. But yet here she is being told, right? you will learn to be a civilized being. And what is it to be a civilized being? Is to keep your mouth shut, right? Um, to learn to be American, to learn the language, and then you'll be civilized. Okay, we often think of this as something happening to um, countries that have been colonized, right? For example, um, we talked about certain countries in Africa like um, the Belgian Congo, uh, South Africa, thinking about Morocco, Sudan, Ethiopia, all of these countries, right? India is another one if we're going to talk about um, Asia. Okay, we never quite think about that someone who would be, who is Russian, would have to be civilized. But there you go. Okay, it's very painful. Let's go to the next page. Okay, so she, um, she talks about her hard work, 2318. The best of me I gave them. Their house cares were my house cares. I got up early. I worked too late. All that my soul hungered to give, I put into the passion which was, with which I scrubbed floors, scoured pots, and washed clothes. I was so grateful to mingle with the American people, to hear the music of the American language, that I never, I never, um, that I never knew tiredness. Right. Okay. Um, so she works, as I said, very hard. She works hard. Um, but the interesting part here, and I wonder if you all noticed it, is is she receiving any sort of education for the language? If she's not. She's listening to it. She's picking up a few words. Is she, is she being um, taught to read it? Is she being taught to write it? Is she being taught the intricacies that is the English language? Okay, um, I'm homeschooling him right now because of the situation with Corona. And I'm looking at the um, the lessons that he has. And they're so difficult, especially the grammar ones. He's learning idioms, right? He's learning idioms and um, they, um, they're they so very difficult. I mean, you learn them, right? If, if I say, for example, it's raining cats and dogs, you knew exactly what it's, talk what they're, what it's saying. He thought it was literally raining cats and dogs. It's raining hard, cats and dogs. Exactly. See, to me, I know what that means. He had to learn that. Um, is she learning these um, very these very difficult aspects of the English language? No, she's not. All she's doing is she's working for them pretty much for free, and she's not learning anything. Okay. Um, on to that though, the bigger problem is is her wages, and I want you all to to notice what she wants to do. Do y'all remember what she wants to buy with her money? Does she want to go off and go party, go drink at the bar, um, go out with with men, go have a good time? Does she want to do that? Do you guys remember? So get the mid-2318. 
okay? Words alone were only meant for the inside of me. The outside of me still branded me for a steerage immigrant. I had to have my, I had to have clothes to forget myself that I'm a stranger yet. And so I had to have money to buy these clothes. The month was up. I was so happy. Now I'd have money, my own earned money, money to buy a new shirt on my back, shoes on my feet, maybe yet an American dress and hat. Okay, this is what she wants. She wants money to buy clothes. She wants her little, her little, her little shirt, maybe a little skirt. She wants her hat. I mean, this is important to her. This is what she wants. She doesn't want to go off and go be, you know, selfish. She just wants her own clothes. Okay, because again, to be American, to look American, okay, you got to, according to her, you have to dress a certain way. You have to act a certain way. Okay, um, you'll see a lot of um, immigrants, and I have a set, I have a student who works with them right now. They want, t they want tennis shoes. Because to them, tennis shoes, you know, Nikes or Reeboks or whatever tennis shoes you young people use, um, that's America. Okay, that's what they want. They want their, te their tennis shoes or what? Their baseball caps. Okay. And how innocent is that? Something that maybe a child would want. I want new clothes. Okay. Let's see what happens when she asks for America. What she wants, excuse me, when she asks for her money. Okay. 2319. So she waits the whole day and finally she says, I want my money. She says, Oi, ve, oi, we, I want my money, my wages. Wages? Money? The four eyes turned into hard stone as they looked me up and down. Haven't you a comfortable bed to sleep? And three good meals a day? You're only a month here. Just came to America. And you already think about money. Wait till you're worth any money. What use are you without knowing English? You should be glad we keep you here. It's like a vacation for you. Other girls pay money yet to be in the country. Okay. That is a very, very heavy paragraph. And I hope that you all were just as uncomfortable reading it as I am reading it right now. So, so uncomfortable. Let's look at the, at the start of it. Okay, why do you need money? You've only been here a month. Okay, she's worked a month for them, but she doesn't deserve money. Okay, all right, keep going. You've just come to America. Okay, wait till you're worth any money. Okay, that line, how painful is that? Wait until you're worth money. You're worthless right now. Why is it? that according to her papa says she's worthless what use are you without knowing english okay so forget the life you've had in russia forget the fact that you speak russian which i can barely understand it and i studied over there for two um two summers okay you're not you're useless because you don't speak english how painful is that to hear okay i mean she's being treated like an idiot because she doesn't speak a language but yes she's worked so hard for them she's given so much of them Okay. You should be glad that we keep you here. It's like a vacation for you. Okay, so what is she doing? She's um, scrubbing the floor, scouring the pots, washing the clothes, taking care of the children, waking up early, going to bed late. Okay, she's doing all of this, but it's like a vacation. Okay. And then the last part, other girls pay money yet to be in the country. Okay. Right now we have um, these issues with coyotes, right, with the human smugglers who... Um, are paid to bring, uh, to sneak immigrants um, into the country, and they're saying the same thing. They're like, other oh, girls pay for this. You should be grateful. Okay, you see that? That abuse that she's being told? That's incredibly, incredibly painful. But like we said, this abuse is nothing new. We see this in the jungle, and we're going to keep seeing these um, in uh, different stories as well. Okay, but that, that's harsh. That's very harsh. Thank you. Okay, so that's job number one. Let's see if it gets any better for her, okay? Okay, so um, her second job is at a sweatshop. Okay, the sweatshop. Uh, the sweatshop of a Delancey Street basement kept up by an old wrinkled woman that looked like a black witch of greed. My work was sewing on buttons. Okay, this is a sweatshop. While in the morning was still dark, I walked into a dark basement, and the darkness met me when I turned out of the basement. She's working um, probably about 12 to... 12 to 14 hours a day sewing buttons okay. um we've talked about the factory work how difficult it is to work in a factory if you've ever sewn a button okay get it sew it okay sewing one or two buttons you can do but imagine doing that continuously okay hour after hour day after day we talked about the continual work in radium girls okay and in the jungle this is every single day and mind you she says right here 
keeps it. Thank you. That the uh, the basement is dark. Can you imagine doing that very tedious work when it's dark? Your eyes hurt. Okay, but she's doing this time and time again. Okay. And if we continue day after day, week after week, all the contact I got with America was handling dead buttons. Okay, she's handling dead things. The money I earned was hardly enough to pay for bread and rent. I didn't have a room to myself. I didn't even have a bed. I slept on a mattress on the floor in a rat hole of a room occupied by a dozen other immigrants. Remember the jungle? Yeah? Okay. I was always hungry, oh so hungry. The scant meals that I could afford only sharpened my appetite for real food. But I felt myself better off than working with the American family, where I had three good meals and a bed and a day in a bed to myself. With all the hunger and darkness of the sweatshop, I at least had the evening to myself. All the night was mine. And when I was asleep, when all were asleep, I used to peep up to the roof of the tenement and talk out my heart in silence to the stars in the sky. Okay, we're going to go ahead and end up this part right now. We'll end it and then we'll continue on the second part of the lecture.